so that we can. There it is. Welcome to the table of <clears throat> Thai God. There isn't any higher. And he is, like we were just saying, we were Mark was praying and he said, you, you are high and lifted up, Lord. And the thing is, he is high and lifted up. But there's something about recognizing it. Sometimes telling your soul, you know, sometimes the spirit man is telling the soul all about what it's seeing and what it's hearing and what it's feeling. Mm -hmm. And we are so happy that we know he's here. He said so. He just said so. And we know that he's high and lifted up. There's there's nothing to be concerned about ever. For, for me, if I see mm -hmm. anything that is not something I want to see, I know he's there. He's there if you make your bed in hell. That's what the Bible says. He's he, looking from east to west. Oh, good. <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's looking. I can see him looking at the horizon from east to west. Well, how many times have we heard east to west? I know <laughs> I've been many, many times. You know, this this is a, a good day. He's still smiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Dad. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Rejoice, rejoice, <laughs> rejoice. <laughs> oh. So we're excited because Mark is having visions of the Lord and and he's smiling. And he's he's, <laughs> east to west. <laughs> he's looking east to west, and he's happy. So that makes me happy, mm -hmm. you know. So today is New Year's Eve, and it is one two three one two three. <laughs> and then if we go the other way, it's three two one three two one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so we're excited about that. Um, the clock stopped. The countdown stopped at three. It stopped at three. It was one, two, three. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. So what he's talking about is share what you're talking about. If you oh, can. there's there's several. <clears throat> I, he's shown me the clock. I've seen this huge clock. Imagine like Big Ben. This huge clock I see in the hour hand. And the minute hand was going up to midnight, but the second hand was moving. It went past four on to five and headed to six. And then he showed me another one where I saw both the hour and the minute hand up, about to hit midnight. And then the second hand was coming up. So it'd be true midnight. The end of the last and the beginning of the new, you know what I mean? The last day ends and the new day begins. And then he showed me a countdown. It was um, like when they're gonna launch the uh, a rocket. But he started at five and he went to four, then he stopped at three. So now we know that three, two, one. <laughs> It's the uh, the final the final countdown, I guess you'd say. <laughs> but time, yeah, the countdown. So the reason why we're excited is because it's it is one two three one two three three two one three two one, but we we aren't saying that anything. <laughs> You know, we get excited about these numbers sometimes. We get excited mm -hmm. about what the Lord's saying. And because everything has meaning, everything, um, he doesn't say anything. That I can see so much in that, though. I'm interrupting you, but I can too. Three, two, Trinity, yeah. two, becoming one. Oh, that's good. 
because we're all we're in the Trinity with him. And if, 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 yeah, the two becoming one. I can even see the spirit and the soul becoming one. I just okay. thought I'd share that. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so thank you, Lord, for being here. We just accept, mm. like we've said before, we know that you're here every week. We know that you're here every day. Um, wow. Some, what, what are you seeing? Many white doves coming out of his hands. Like I saw his hands open up. I don't know if you can see me, but and then I saw like white doves with bows on them. Oh, wow. Wow. Yep. White mm -hmm. bows. Does it kind of tell you that um there could be an outpouring of the spirit? Very mm -hmm. I think so too. Gifts, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. And they're white. That's good. Absolutely. So thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you for everything that you've been sharing with us. Thank you. Now his hands are empty. <laughs> they're all they're all gone. So I guess maybe they went where they were supposed to go. Mm -hmm. Or they will. Right? This is really an exciting time that we're living in. It's so exciting. He's excited. <laughs> Everything is brand new. Everything is changing. Like we've said over and over again, this is the time of the kingdom being established. The kingdom has been prepared. The kingdom is many things, but it is in the lands, you know, we, we've talked about from the beginning and I don't want to get too far into it, but you know, the garden belonged to Adam and Eve. The garden belonged to the family. And they were, they had to leave. And they lost everything, their hopes, their desires for their family, for future generations through them. And the enemy had came in, deceived, and what he does, he kills, steals, and destroys. And he took these precious things that mean everything to the family of God. You know, when you think about who you are and him and who he is in you and your life together, you're not looking at the carnal things of the world. You're looking at love, loving him, knowing him, being one with him, being with your family. Th these are things that he wants. Um, but he was stripped. They were stripped, all of them, the whole family, stripped of rulership, dominion, all the things that creators want to live in, in their creation and do, you know, they want to experience their creation. They want to enjoy their creation. They want it, they want it to be what they want. And it was pure. It was made to be beautiful and lovely and full of joy and peace and righteousness, and no evil. But today is the day after it was stripped and taken away by a cunning deceiver who 
lives to kill, who hates. He's polar opposite of what the kingdom God, the kingdom of God is all about. And so all of these things are coming back. The, hmm. the family, all the believers that belong to him, this is a new day. This is a totally new day. But I can tell you, evil will be destroyed. The wicked will go. Any, we'll talk about wrath today, vengeance, those things, but I I hope that I'll be able to explain it in a way where you can see the purpose again, the purpose of it and why it has to happen. And we'll get into that in a little while. But the good news is the kingdom is being established. It's descending from, hev from heaven into earth. It's a new heaven, new earth. The new, new generation. Yes, new generation. The 42nd generation. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. You know, let the king of glory come in. Who is? Yes, Father. Yes, Father. For I will have myself a new generation, a generation of love and purity and holiness, a generation of fire. My generation shall walk this earth, mine alone. Just let me know if you have anything else. We've talked about the 42nd generation. It's the generation of Christ and his seed. And he just said that his generation, his people, are going to walk the earth alone. The evil's going. Oh. <laughs> they are born of my blood of my will of my desires they will walk before me they will stand Lord, you are the desire of our heart. We love you. We bless your holy name. You alone are worthy of all praise and glory and honor. We bow before you because you're beautiful, because you're wonderful, because you, you do all things well. You are glorious. The king is glorious in all his ways. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you. For I have set them in stone. I have set them in stone. They cannot be moved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm shaking and my heart's pounding. He's here. <laughs> Even more so. From east to west. I 
I can see that lightning bolt going across the horizon, but it's dropping down in certain places like chain lightning. It's, it's hidden in the clouds, but it's not hidden. What I do, I do quickly. Yes, Lord. Those that will go, will go. Those that will stay, will stay. Things are in motion. It cannot be stopped. <laughs> Nor will it be. That ball, that law, that roll, that stone that is rolling, it's crushing. Were you talking about a stone that you saw before? Yep. <clears throat> that big millstone. It was rolling. It was not controlled by... It was like a long cylinder stone, big. And it was rolling. And as it was rolling forward, it had nothing holding it. I could see a hole in each end where you would put a device to hold it, like a millstone device, but it was being controlled by him. And there was blood coming out before it, and there was empty husks behind it. It's kind of like a, kind of like a, like you said, you said a millstone. It reminds mm. me of a wine glass. It's big. There's nothing small about that. <laughs> it's like enough. It is. It could press the whole world in an instant. Yep. It's happening. There's ex excitement. <laughs> Like what has been done has been done. But what is happening now is he's excited. I don't want to interrupt. It just, because sometimes it just feels like there's a flow going. I could. Oh, feel it. Just keep letting it come. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. There are cries. I can hear cries. It's not good cries. A pain and anguish. But they're all to the left. It's the sea. It's, it's been divided. Yeah. You're seeing di division of the sea? Okay. Yep. Yeah. But the people make up the sea. But they're... Um, they it's dark and I can see faces and hands okay. and mouths wide open looking up. Crying out in pain and anguish. Okay. So we're talking about Revelation 16, 3 today that talks about the second bowl into the sea. Although I feel that the bowls have already been released spiritually. 
um, we're going to see the effects of the bowls. So for him to say the C and that there's a split because normally when you look at the book of Revelation and interrupt me, please, I want to hear what he's saying. Um, when you look at the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation is written to the church. <laughs> so He's looking straight ahead and I can see a I want to say you hold about straight ahead. Mm -hmm. Like this bright. It's a, a, a light, a gold, a bright. It's not anything of this world and shooting straight up from the horizon. And he's looking straight ahead, walking through. He's not looking to the left or the right. He's looking straight ahead. And he's walking. And we are walking after him. I can see the light. Dad can too. We're following dad as we're we're going. We're moving. So are you seeing that when you saw the sea, now you're seeing that when I'll just say we are walking with him towards the light. Are we walking away from the sea? Can you tell? Walking through it. Walking through the sea? Yeah. And it's open? Yeah. Is it, so it's split open? Like, yeah. like yeah. the sea or the Jordan opened up? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And it's not a steep hill to climb. <laughs> And it's a bright light. It's not like a city, but it's a bright light. Right. Uh, I don't know how to describe it, but it's a piercing. It's it's a piercing light that pierces through the darkness and goes up into the heavens on the horizon. It's like a sharp piercing light. It's not broad. It's like it goes up like this, way up, but it's long and very piercing. Is it like a sword? Very, no, no. I would describe it as I don't know how to describe it, actually, because it's a, if you looked at a, you know, how like uh, the Christmas star, they showed like the really uh, exaggerated uh, tips of the stars, how they shoot way up and way out, how they're very long and slender and very sharp points at the end. But this light is just one light that shoots straight up from the horizon. Okay. A lot of times when um, Mark shares these visions, we get an interpretation later. And sometimes it's just a matter, sometimes I can get it really quickly and sometimes I can't. Um, I know that he has talked about a sharp. Obviously we know the sword is sharp but you have made it sound like it's almost like you're going into the father. It's almost like um, he will be all in all. That's what I was sensing because we're walking towards him. Mm -hmm. The goal is that he is all in all when he's talked about piercing things before like he even talked about the moon he talked about 
um, how it's when it's the crescent shape of the moon that it's a sharp point like at the end and he was saying that's time to tread but we're walking away from treading now i can see the ground to my left it's dry and brittle and cracked and dark And left usually means judgment. That's where the judgment mm -hmm. is happening. I'm just trying to fill in what I can grasp a hold of. There's big cracks in the dirt. Dry. Very dry. Been dry. It looks like it's been dried forever. It's like um, land can be land, but it can also be people. You know... Ezekiel said, can these dry bones live? You know, the Lord said to him, can they live? He says, I don't know, Lord, can they? <laughs> I love that. But that's what it reminds me of. And, and it reminds me of what we're going to talk about today a little bit. A little bit. What else? Oh, he's he's looking ahead. He's just he lifted his eyes from the table. And he's looking ahead. Is he seated? Like, huh? Is he seated at the table? He's bigger than the table. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, imagine the skyscraper. You look up and. <laughs> He is, he is the table. He's, I don't know how to describe it, but he's, yeah, I can't see him sitting. I see the upper <laughs> half and his head is <laughs> high and lifted up for sure. Oh, oh, I love it. But he has a heavenly view of everything that's going on. And we're like, I like how uh, in his word he said, we're like grasshoppers in his sight. But then you, uh, Joshua said, they're like grasshoppers to us. How great is our God? How great is our God? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he yeah. has everything under control. He has everything under control. And when he shows you the size that he is representing in that vision, you know, it's like, what can get past him? What, <laughs> anything he can't see? Absolutely not. He's all seeing, all knowing, all powerful. How All hearing. <laughs> <laughs> How could we possibly be concerned about anything if you're in him? He hears the whispers of the enemy in their bed chambers. You can't hide anything from him. You can't. And at the same time, he whispers into your, your heart, into your mind, his words, his thoughts. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And they melt you. Just what a loving, merciful, and patient kind mm -hmm. these words don't even describe him but lord i'm doing the best i can with the words you've given me <laughs> i love you yes you know there's a and i'm not trying to get started i'm just you were just reminded me of something you reminded me of a a scripture and i'm just going to read it in revelation 6 15 through 17, it talks about the people of the earth. Okay. And then it goes um, like this. Then the kings of the earth and its great princes and generals, the rich and the powerful, and everyone, whether they are slave or free, ran 
for cover and hid in the caves among the mountain boulders. So these boulders were coming down, right? They mm -hmm. hid. And it says, they called out to the mountains and the boulders saying, fall on us. You're our... getting closer. <laughs> We're getting closer to the light. I saw white linen, like a white linen scroll or roll of being rolled out from 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 right to left like we're walking up but then it formed like white stairs and then i saw lamps those lamps again those lights lamp posts on the right and the left they're lit they're golden light but they're lit like a separate is so far apart evenly on both sides as we're walking up Walking up the stairs. Yeah. That's a white linen. It rolled out and then it turned into stairs. And the gold. Those lanterns. Hmm. Are they like... Um... The lanterns in the the um, golden candlestick are they that type of lantern, or are they like a street? That's what I that's what I thought of when I saw them. Okay, like the the lampstand. Yes, the golden lampstand with the golden light, golden flame. Mm -hmm. It's not red. It's not. It's golden. <laughs> flame with white at the wick like a white center but there's one flame on each lamp So keep sharing. <laughs> I I know, like <laughs> uh, a couple of weeks ago, I'm like, okay, where are we now? But I was just gonna share this because you were talking about the size of him. So yeah. here in Revelation 6, 15, 17, people of the earth, earth dwellers, are crying out. These are kings. <laughs> You know, these are princes of the earth and generals, and they're crying out and they're saying, rocks, fall on us, boulders, fall on us, hide us. And what do they want to be hidden from? Him. Yeah. In the Passion Translation, it says, hide us from the glorious face of the one seated on the throne. And... From the wrath of the Lamb. And I love that because they want to be, if you think about it, they want to be hidden from the glorious face. Does that sound like it goes together? No. But it says, and from the wrath. Because what you were saying, you know, his face, it's beautiful. It's mm -hmm. wonderful. His face, the glory of God, you know, him is in the face of Jesus Christ, Yahushua. There's galaxies in his eyes. They're blue and there you can see. <sighs> More than that, it's love, just a love that. It just emanates from him. You can't. He, he is love. There's no other way to put it. When you're around him, 
His love just flows through you. It's you can't stop it. Nor do you want to. You can run from it. He'll let you. Don't run from it. Run run to it. <laughs> so the contrast between what you just said, that's something that we would all go towards. That that is the nature. I mean, you look at him and that is his nature and his beauty. And that is always who we want to draw closer to. But, you know, and the thing is, many, many people only see God as love. They only see God as unconditional love. And the way that sounds is whatever you do, however you do it. <laughs> no, no, no. And he will, There's, he will always love you, but he's, yeah. a good Go you said it right there. He's my dad and my father, yeah. a father. Correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is with him, there is tough love. Mm -hmm. There's chastisement, but with a dad, there's, there's a difference. Yeah. There is. And they don't, you're right, they don't understand that he's not, yes, he's love, unconditional, but he is also righteous, pure, and holy. That's it, right there. Because he said, be holy as I am holy. So for his people at all different stages, you know, you saw a people following him. They're following the lamb. Now, these people are saying, hide us from the ram, the ram, excuse me, the lamb, because these that were, that I just read about, they're afraid because they see his beautiful, glorious face, but the wrath is scaring them because possibly they didn't know the fear of the Lord. They didn't think that he would come and say, time is up. Hmm. Now you're going to see a father in control. You're going to see what discipline and love is all about. So this is speaking about the great day of the wrath that has come. Who's able to stand? So with that said, we talked about wrath will make you fearful. You know, you just saw a vision of people in the sea screaming, crying out in torture. Mm -hmm. I can tell you just like what we see in the book of Revelation, we see a series of visions. And what you see are visions. They tell a story. And this is really the language of the spirit. So we can't take a vision and interpret it with the, cor the carnal mind. You can't mm -hmm. take a vision and interpret it with human reasoning. The Lord speaks often in types and symbols and pictures and visions. Okay, now I have to say this because okay. I shared this with you earlier today about the stone. In the rectangular white stone, but he keeps reminding me, and I have to be obedient because I saw more. I didn't understand it, but I want to share it with you. As he he was, I looked and I saw him. He was like he was sitting down. He pulled this lever when he did this Jenga. I call it like a, a shape, like a a rectangular stone, 
Did you just say letter? Did you say letter? Uh, Did you say lever, lever. Oh, lever. Okay, lever. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> His right hand, he pulled the lever, and I saw this rectangular white stone fall. And I looked through the opening, and I can see it go all the way to the ground. And it hit. But then after, I was like, what am I, I said, what am I seeing? I thought, um, Urim, because he's been speaking to me a lot about Urim and Thummim lately. I thought the Urim stone, so the Urim stone, which is lights, is it lights? Lights on perfection, Urim and Thummim. But then I saw the stone kind of like dissolve a little bit, then it elevated above, and then it was like a shield like a, a, a force field, a shield or something like that that surrounded this area. And then I thought of the the one time where he opened up his robe and there were diadems where they were placed here and there. But these, imagine if you were like a big dome or force field covering a large area. I could see like veins and, and webbing, like uh, veins, blood veins, vessels in this, but they weren't energized yet. And then when I saw, see so many of these things, I think, well, now I remember you showed dad that when they were all united, then that immense amount of power the, uh, the nucleus, it just created that force field, that dividing, it cut everything in half and it was a force field. And then I thought about how he, he showed me a long time, a couple years ago, how like what the Holy Spirit's in me and in you and in all of those around us, when we are in perfect unity, how it all comes together the body comes together as one. And when it does, it is a impenetrable um, power because it's his body all coming. When all those different individual people who have Holy Spirit and allow him to do whatever he wants, come together in perfect unity. Then I saw how dad was showing me like there's a connection between me and this person, we join together in unity, then this person, it's like a network of nerves and, and blood vessels and everything. When it all comes together, it's just, it's over. So it's like his body. Huh? It's like yeah. his body. Yeah. You know, you, you saw blood vessels, you saw it hasn't been energized yet, but um, in this day, I believe we're going to see true dunamis power because mm -hmm. of that unity right it's like yeah. rotating, it's like that covering is almost like his body or protection over the people that are within that have been unified or will be unified in this day because and i can see them branch connect branch to each and there's not you have to understand the world when you look at the world it's huge, but these are strategic and there's not a lot. Mm -hmm. These are his, but <laughs> he has taken few to conquer multitudes. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. What matters? Yes, yeah, just we are going to enjoy this ride. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's been saying. So this is good because these are what we've what we've been talking about for a while are basically the rem the remnant. It's the remnant. It's the first fruits. It's the forerunners. It's the ones that he has prepared for this day. He personally has prepared them. He personally has made them ready. They worked with him. They, you know, it's like the bride makes herself ready. So she has a part in connecting with what he's doing. It's a co-laboring. The Lord 
and his people together. He works in them. He knows exactly what to do, what to do next, how to raise that person up to the place that he wants them to be in. And so that they succeed and that they actually walk in the fullness of the stature of Christ. That's growing up into the head. So you're growing up into the head in all things. You're maturing. You are connected. The head is connected to the body. And in this day of this unification, even if I could say the marriage supper of the lamb, where the everything is unified, there's a unification that we've been waiting for, that he's been waiting for, that is coming. That's when you're going to see that, you're going to see the everything energized in the body because now the body is framely fit together perfectly. The seas have closed up. The seas have closed up? Yep. That means no more crossing? We're on the other side. Okay. So there's a remnant that's on the other side of the sea. And, you know, it's interesting because... I'll get to it later, but Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 65, I believe, it talks about judgment. And in the middle of judgment, it talks about the remnant. And that's what we're seeing because, like I said, he's made that remnant ready for because judgment time makes what it ends up doing is it creates. They are. <laughs> Like an outpouring of, I don't know, how do I say it? A thankfulness of, a thankfulness of everything. Just a, a gratitude, it's beyond thankfulness and gratitude that they're expressing to him on the other side. As I can't put it into words. Matt, I can't even, I I feel it. But it's a, 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 a loving, deep, loving thankfulness and a deep appreciation for everything. I don't, I can't find the right words. What it reminds me of is Revelation 15, actually 15 long of Moses and the Lamb, how the people that are singing you know, they're singing with the harps, right? Mm -hmm. Overcomers. They. You feel it. I feel it in my heart. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but they are like true. Great. True. Yes. Like truly, 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 truly. And they are like a heart filled with tears of love and everything everything yeah you know the only the overcomer can sing that song and they didn't overcome because they did it on their own and they're not looking back they're only looking to him they're not looking back at the sea they're not looking back where they came from you know there there is um, there's a weightiness to glory, but there's also a weightiness to um, loss that has been attached to the flesh. I don't know if you saw their bodies. I don't know if you saw a difference in their skin. Did you see any, any of that? Mm -hmm. Did Not that you noticed. I could feel their hearts more than anything. There's a weight. There is the, uh, the posture was kneeling down. Worship. Worship, deep, deep, deep worship. Like nothing but. I don't, every time I, I don't know, every time I turn to body, I'm just <laughs> 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 All I know is 
these people know that the old man is dead. Dead as a doorknob, you know, and they are living in the newness of life that's only in him. And like we've both said, there's no turning back. You know, I can't even find <laughs> who I was. I can't find who I was. She's dead. She, who I was, flesh in the old life is dead. I gave my life to him, right? And so therefore, it's like, I can't go back. I'm, I can't go back over that sea to find my old life because who would want it? It's horrible, right? It's, it was horrible. Although many pretend. <laughs> Come let us go Come let to us the go. mountain of the Lord and, yeah. gaze upon her, and gaze upon her beauty. That's beautiful. Hmm. that is so beautiful you know the only reason why anyone you know he's talking about the mountain of the Lord but what I'm saying is he has made these people beautiful he has done it it's the end working of the spirit and you know it's it's jesus christ has come in the flesh and he is he uses his power inside of us to change us from glory to glory he he has our life planned out you know we're on that path and he knows where you're going and he leads you to he leads you on that path. And along the way, he teaches you and he shows you. And you change from glory to glory only because you followed the Lamb wherever he led you. We cannot take credit for any of it. He is the one that does it all. And what he does is he gets rid of every evidence of the fall in your life. He gets rid of, because it died on the cross with him. And he gets rid of every, everything that Satan brought as a result of the fall. He takes away he removes, he takes away. He takes away the dross so that the light shines through. The light shines. The light within, which is him. So I'm in, I'm, I'm going in a lot of different directions. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can move closer if you want. Come on. I, I have company. Yeah. So I had to, I took my headphones out so he can hear too, Rodney. Hey, Rodney. Hi. Come on over. Can you squeeze over? Maybe you could, hey, Rod. Hi. I have seen you in so long. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah, you look great. Yeah, thank you. You look great too. Thank you. Oh, that was sweet. <laughs> <laughs> he had to say that. <laughs> But anyhow, we're glad you're here. We're so glad you're here. But I am all over the place. So the sea, <laughs> um, you know, I can just, I can, let me go back and try to fill in some blanks. Um, the Lord showed earlier, I'm just going to kind of go over the visions. And the Lord showed earlier that the sea was divided. There was the right side. There was the left side. And he walked through with the overcomers, those that he had worked in. They we were, 
the best way I can describe it is we are in him. So as he crossed over, we were we are in him and we crossed over in him with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. I couldn't see us. I, I I knew we were following him, but we are in him. Yeah. And that makes sense because later you saw the body as well. So we are in him. <clears throat> yeah. That's exactly everything is in him, right? So um so with that said, we were he, we were in him crossing the sea, and then the water covered again, but you heard basically weeping and gnashing. I saw it um as he was crossing. I saw faces and hands lifted up in the darkness because he they were looking up to him, crying so we, out in pain and anguish. Yep. Like, help me. Yep. But he wasn't looking. He was looking straight ahead. Because you know why? He has given, and I'm trying to pull this together. So yeah. I could just, you know, a couple hours of sleep last night. <laughs> Let me see. Okay. That so, that knows. <laughs> um, the Lord has said, He's been saying for at least two years, and probably three years, and probably even longer than that. He's been saying, "Repent." He's been saying, "Change your ways." He's so, been saying, "Come to me." He's been saying that come and change your mind be with me i'm calling you make a decision make a decision in your life do you basically in a nutshell do you want me do you want the world because i can tell you if you're lukewarm you're not going to be i've talked about this before there's either right now there's either left or right and that's it. And he even went through and he he reseparated even from the right. So he took a remnant out of the right. So yeah. that said, he has spoken through prophets. He has spoken through you for a few years now. I mean, you started seeing these like visions and, and everything and hearing about it about three years ago. And then we started hearing it more from other people. And then some people have been talking about this for a long time. With all of that said, people hear it. And sometimes the first time they hear it, they begin to repent. And then it seems like it takes a little bit longer than what they wanted, what they expected. And then sometimes they go back to their old ways. And so he has given them an opportunity to repent and change their ways and follow him. Is he supposed to beg? I'm just, I'm just saying, this is why people see his glorious face and then they go and run, want to run from the wrath because they're shocked. They didn't listen to his voice through his prophets. Now they're shocked. Do you think that he was just saying all of these things because he wanted something to talk about? He gave a warning of more than three years, more than two and a half years. I know that because we're past three years at this point. And he said it over and over and over again to the point where it was it was really hard because all we did is talk about vengeance and wrath. <laughs> and you know, and that's not what we always talked about before. He said, talk about it. And so we did. And so now people have no excuse. You either tuned in or you tuned out or you didn't care. And tuning out is not caring. So he moved the lukewarm and he put them over to the left. 
And he said, when you cry out to me, I'm not going to have any pity. Do you think when he makes a comment like that, that he means I'm only kidding? So he doesn't. He said, I'm not going to. And he said, you don't have pity over them either. So when you see them crying out, when I say they're supposed to be where they are because they're suffering the punishment of not being obedient. I'm sorry to put it so hard, but this is the hard cold truth because I want people to understand why he wouldn't pay attention to someone screaming out. You know, normally he want he wants people to come to him that um, do not have to know the fear of the Lord in great detail. You know, um, he just wants you to come because you love him. He wants you to come because you're grateful that he died on the cross so that you could have a new life. He wants you to know the importance that he died for you. He died for you. And we act like it was nothing. God came in the flesh and died for you, for me, for all of us. And the world thinks it was nothing. Think about that. Do you think it was nothing to him <laughs> when they took a cat of nine tails and hit him 39 times in the back and split his skin open. It ripped the flesh but, off his bones. Yes. Do you think it was nothing for him? Do you think it was nothing for him even when they spit on him and treated him like he was the scum of the earth? Like he was the sinner and he was the perfect lamb of God. Do you think that he didn't feel anything? Do you think he didn't feel anything when they hammered the nails? With like a sledgehammer. Those nails are not small. Mm-mm. -mm. They went into his, the palm of his hands. I think it was the palms. And then a nail for both of his feet. Do you think, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just speaking about it because this is, this I take personally because my Lord and Savior died for me and you. And when you still, people of the earth, earth dwellers and sea dwellers who still act like it was nothing. I take it personally because he suffered. He was a man. Yes, he was fully God. He had perfect blood, but he felt every single feeling. And just the fact that when he was hung on the cross, however, however it was, that in his, in his feet were nailed together. I've heard someone explain once about how his body was going, like being pulled by gravity. Okay, so what's happening here? The nail is ripping, ripping open the hole because of the weight of your body and you're being pulled down He's bleeding to death. He has a crown of thorns in his head that are piercing his skull. Do you think that he took that like, oh, not a problem? Who did he do it for? Everyone who would believe. And the ones that say they believe, think sometimes the cross was nothing. You know what 
irritates me lately is these people say, oh, I, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Just constantly, I plead the blood on this. I plead the blood on that. Plead the blood on... You don't understand what that means. Yeah. You don't. I don't understand what it means. You treat it like it's some kind of a magic wand. And it's some kind of a way to do what they want. Or live the way they want. Oh, I'm okay. Get out of jail ticket. Yeah. So the bottom line is... When he died for you, meaning all of us, and people reject him, yes, it, it hurts him. But there reaches a point where, and we're at that point, we are at that point, because the Lord, he did, he's not winking at our sin. He's not winking at our pitiful lives when we don't follow him anymore he's not waiting any longer it's done we are at a point of no return and it is done what has been called for in the earth in the sea will be done and people will be screaming and they'll be saying, have pity on me. And he won't because he did. He did. He did. On they the will wish that they were dead. Yeah. Unfortunately, many will know what it's like to, to die a horrible death. Even a spiritual, I mean, even even wish that they could die and even wish this is what the Bible says, even wish they were never born. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with us? How come we think that what he did is nothing? So he's alive. He's real. Yes, he is. You know, he wants relationship with everyone. He loves everyone. But he's done with the playing of church, the playing of relationship, the pretending, the facade. Mm -hmm. He's done with the flesh that Satan dwells in. He's done with it. Because the kingdom is a place that is good and holy. And flesh will not enter it. And when I say flesh, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about your skin. I'm not talking about your body. I'm talking about a nature. And that nature is a sin nature. That nature is where Satan comes in and he dwells. It's in the five natural senses you've talked about over and over again, right? Mm -hmm. It is in worldly. It's loving the world, the worldly ways. It's a life that you're constantly living by the lusts of your eyes, the lusts of the flesh. It's a life where you don't think about that at all, hardly at all. You think about yourself. Yeah. And when I want to, I'll think about him. I'm just not ready today. Mm -hmm. Or it's not going to happen in my lifetime, so I'm going to enjoy it while I can. Yeah. And, sometimes and then when it happens, I'll be, uh, no. Nah. It don't work that way. You never know. And, and the thing is, I'm going to get off this, but you never know when you're going to leave, when it's your time is up. And. Yeah, don't take anything for granted. No, absolutely not. When it's up, it's up. 
He told us that. It's like, you can't say nobody told me. Fleshly wisdom will say, oh, I have time. I'm just going to live and have fun. And, and you know what? So many people feel that just being on the earth is about, he put us here so we can have fun all the time. You know, it's, we can live our lives the way we want and do what we want. That's that sounds what kind of here. new age. Yeah. <laughs> The bottom line is, I don't want my old life. I don't want who I was. That person was not happy. That person had no peace. <clears throat> that person pretended, you know, that person was hurt inside. When you give your life to him fully, everything changes. And he works in you. And the overcomers were the ones that said, yes, do it. I want you. I don't care if I go through trials and tribulation. I don't care what needs to be done in me until I believe you and what you've done in me and who I am in you. Work in me so that I believe. Like you've said before, help my belief increase my ability to believe you all he's looking for is a is a heart that says please lord help me help me i can't tell you how many nights i've cried. <laughs> oh yeah help me help me and guess what there's always joy in the morning he always takes your ashes and he gives you beauty. He does. Everything the word says is true. But he wants, you know, he's not going to force anyone to come. He's not. He's not. Satan does that. Satan wants control. Come here. Get over here. You know, Satan's a liar. Oh, you're going to have a great life. Just have fun. Yeah. You know, Satan is very religious. He's more religious than some of the religious out there. Because why? Because he creeped into the church and he wants to take over. And what did he do? He watched the sons of God. He likes to watch the sons of God and what they're doing. You know, after he was he was um, there with the, the woman in, in Revelation 12, you know, he, he wanted to distract her. He wanted to get her off track. He also said, you know, when he, when he was no longer needed there, he says, okay, I'm going after the followers. I'm going after the big guns, <laughs> the ones that love him, you know? And, um, but they overcame because we see that. We see that in Revelation 14. We see that in Revelation 15. They sing a song from their heart. They're full of joy. They're full of love. Wow. You described in this vision. They went to the other side and they were forever grateful. I've said to the Lord, I will thank you. Every time I think about it through eternity, because I don't want what I was. I'm so thankful for what you've done for me. I'm a whole new person. And when you can say that and you live it, people with a carnal mind cannot understand. They think you're possibly... You're <laughs> I think you drank the Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> and they think that you're extreme. But was Jesus extreme? He was. But his family thought he was nuts. They did. His family thought he was nuts. But the bottom line is he's the only one that had it together. 
And he worked with the disciples, just like he works with the overcomers. And I'll get into the wrath, people, in just a minute. But he works with the overcomers because he wants children. He wants a family, just like it from the very beginning, a family that's in the image and the likeness of him. That generation he's talking about are sons and daughters who look just like him. They only do what he does, just like he only listened to what the father said. He only did and said what the father said. The children are tuned, tuned in. What he does inside, and you can explain this too, what he does inside of you is very hard to explain. I would, I'm just saying that it's a life and we're not even fully into the fulfillment of what he's bringing us to, but it is a life that you could, and you've said this before, you could live in a cardboard box and you could be happy inside. What person can say that that's worldly? As long as I have him, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. He, he's worth everything. He yeah. is worth everything. Everything. What he does inside of you and what he, in the experience of being with him, is the best life ever. And a person that has never explained it, or excuse me, experienced it, always fight you on it. You've gone overboard because they don't know. Did Abraham go overboard? I'm just saying. How about Moses? Did he go overboard? Maybe people think he did. People think Noah went overboard, but Noah was the only smart one <laughs> in that day. Noah made it through with eight members of his family and a whole bunch of animals, you know? Noah was obedient. Noah was a son of God. And obedience makes you a true son of God. Obedience is better than sacrifice. But when you're a son of God, you will sacrifice. Oh, you want that, Lord? Take it. One thing he's done, he does in a life of someone that overcomes. He will say, let me have that. And you go, well, it's not even bad. It's, it's something that's good. But I want to be with you. And then you find that it's the best decision in the world to give up whatever he tells you to give up. Because there was no life in it. He, I he just want to be with him all the time. It's like, I don't want to be around people. I don't want to, I don't, whatever I do, I do with him. The world does not interest you anymore. You know, it's, and you, and it fades away. Like it's importance just fades away. That's what happens in him. But what he does, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to just say, you saw, he, he walked through the sea. It was split open. There were people on the right, people on the left. There are, I started saying before in the book of Revelation, the book is written to the churches. We know that it's written to the church. But what he's doing in this day, because this is the great and terrible day of the Lord that we're entering, what he's doing in this day also affects the earth. He is clearing it of evil. But so there are also people there that are crying out. Like, you know, I know you, 
do you know me? And a, and a lot of times he'll say, I never knew you. We know that. He didn't even look at him. Yeah, he doesn't because he's already said, he's already warned, he already sounded the alarm, he blew the trumpets. Um, it was in the atmosphere. You know, if you really were searching out the Lord, you would have found something on it. And then you would have had the opportunity to say, I believe it or I don't. So those people had an opportunity like we all do. So pulling this together in some way, shape or form, um, the overcomers went over. He prepared them. The wrath that is taking place, what it ends up doing, and like I said last week, when I said the first bowl, um, bowl was poured out, it was poured into the earth. So what happened? When it was poured out, these boils, and like all I could think of is like, excuse me, but pussy, like wounds, in the flesh were seen. And we started talking about what does that represent? Does someone have a boil? They might, but what does it represent? It represents a person when the bowl is poured out, it's a flesh, it was a earth dweller. So it was a, someone that really lives in the soulish realm and they are fleshy. When they are fleshy, they live a life of flesh instead of the spirit. So they sow to the flesh and not the spirit. And so with that said, what's inside of them, any corruption, because they've sown to the flesh, any corruption that's inside of them, is exposed. So this bowl, whatever's inside of it, it's the wrath of God. It creates um, this, it just has to happen. It's a spiritual thing. Whatever's inside of them starts to come out. And it's usually the nastiness of the flesh. And what I mean by that it's when you start seeing things like in the church, you see, you know, adulteries. You see, um, sometimes there are churches that there are drugs. I mean, there are all kinds of things. They call themselves the Church of Jesus Christ, and they make their own man rules, you know. And whatever they're doing, it's exposed. It's disgusting. Okay, it comes out and it it makes everyone go, uh, that's horrible. How could this be? And then the people are saying, I can't, you know, unless they're a liar and they're living with Satan and they don't care, they say, what have I done? And with that is inward torture. The Everything he does is inwardly it's poured out into the earth it was poured the bowl was poured out into the earth and so whatever's inside of that earth and vessel which we are earth then vessels right the nastiness and the corruption comes out with whatever was poured out through that bowl it happens it just does when the Lord speaks, it just happens. When he says winds, earth, you know, he says fire, he says, you know, whatever he calls out, they lis it listens. This is spiritual. This is a spiritual world that we're living in. You know, when he called out to the animals, the animals started doing strange things, like going around in circles. And everyone was like, this video the animals are going around in circles he spoke it they they hear they hear 
their creator's voice. They hear their ruler's voice. And when the bowl is poured out into a carnally minded, fleshly person, exposure will come. Okay. So why is that important? Because they didn't repent. Why is that important? Because they weren't obedient. Why is that important? Because they never came to him and said, change me, Lord. I give you my life. Because they never did that, it's forced on them. Because he loves you that much. That sounds different, but I'm just telling you, he does not love Satan. And he knows what Satan has done in people. He knows the pain, the suffering that we go through because of what Satan has done in our lives. He knows the sin that people are involved in because of what Satan has done to you. He hates Satan. He loves you. And because of his love, he will make you go to a place even where you are publicly exposed and everyone is disgusted around you for who you are. They see it. The problem is everyone around is having the same experience. Some of these people are full of demons. You see all kinds of weird stuff going on. But with all of that said, wrath has vengeance. It's, it's, it's discipline. It's correction. He corrects with a rod of iron. And I can tell you, he has no pity when flesh is exposed. Because if you just came to me, I was crying out to you to come to me. I would have cleaned you up. I would have helped you. I would have changed you from glory to glory. I would have worked inside of you by my spirit. But you didn't. And so now you're going through this. There are people that are in the sea realm, which is usually the body realm. There are people that are in the earthly realm, which is usually the soul realm. And then there are people that are in the heavens. And those are the ones that their minds are in the heavenlies. They're, they're not earthly minded. They're heavenly minded. They're seated with Christ. And that's where he wants all of us to be. He gives everyone an opportunity. He's not a respecter of persons. We make the decisions. The problem is we want to blame somebody else when we didn't make the right decision. Oh, that person was, uh, I didn't like him. You know, <laughs> oh, okay. That's a good excuse not to walk in a relationship with the Lord. You know what I mean? People make every excuse. And they, you know, the first thing that happened in the garden in the fall, you know, is like, it's that woman you gave me. You know, I'm just saying it's the woman. She did it. And it was true. But the snake is also blaming, you know, it's like, it's a blame game. How many times? I mean, even with the, even with people in the government, how many times do they say, Oh, it's those people, you know, in the blue or the red or whatever. It's those people. It's their fault. It's not mine. Never taking the credit. And that's what the flesh does. The flesh will never admit it's wrong. Because it's highly exalted in itself. It sits on the throne as king. And that's the person he's going to knock them right off that throne. <laughs> I can't hear you. Were you, were you. Sorry, I was on mute. I went, gone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've seen visions of what he's going to do to preachers and ministers that have exalted their self and they've sat in his throne and they do their own thing. They preach what they want to preach. They preach how they want to preach. They, they handle everything. There's, and he, he sees the pride and the arrogance. And he makes them walk down backwards, right? 
I remember the first time, this was a couple of years ago, I saw in this vision someone that we know. It was like the rug was being pulled out from under him. And he was, it was pulled out so fast he was falling backwards, but he was like kind of elevated, falling down. And he was on a wooden platform. <clears throat> but this last one, yeah, he was going to back them down. They were going to walk down backwards, down the steps and bow at the very bottom. Yeah. So he, yeah. We're going to see a lot of that in the coming days. A lot of it. People that are highly exalted, you know, this big name preacher or that big name person, or even the small named ones, I don't, you know, everyone, it's, if they are exalting their self over him, he will expose it. That's what we're living in right now. Narcissistic. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's it right there. And this society has become more narcissistic than ever before. Oh, yeah, it's all around. Yeah. Selfish. All yeah. about self. You know, even, even when people love you, you know, I know of a situation where I realized this person that say says to you or me or whoever, in this case, me, that they love you. They don't really love you. They love themselves and what you can do for them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why do you love me? Because you do this, 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 or me. That's why. So it's all about me. <laughs> and if you don't do this and don't do that, then I don't care about you that much. That is not love, the love of God. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, people... There are all kinds of relationships out there that are just like that. They're in families, you know. There are fathers that only care about themselves. Mothers that only care about themselves. They never really cared about their children. If you take a look at it, they never really cared. Did they care? In some cases, you see some things and you go, how could that be caring? Maybe there's something you don't understand. But... Bottom line is, the only true and pure love comes from him. Mm -hmm. And it's so pure. It is so, so. Holy. <laughs> yeah. And it's a power. I can't say that enough. It's a, it's a pure and holy power. So I'm all over the place. I don't want to keep you all night, but I do want to get to this scripture. Um, yeah, it is getting late. So when I go to um, Revelation 16, 3, I'll just read it. Um, it says in one translation I pulled up, it says, and the second angel poured out his bowl upon the sea. So we saw the sea and it became as blood, the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. Hmm. Okay. So you can look at that naturally, or you can look at it spiritually, just like the flesh. So we're talking about the sea. What is the sea? We talked about it's the body realm. But we also know that the sea speaks of humanity, right? It speaks of, it can individually, it speaks of inner storms. You know, we're talking about inside of us. Like you can look at a person and they can look like they're at peace, but you don't know what's going on inside of them. 
unless you know them personally, you're shown what's going on inside of them because people can fake it pretty well for so many hours, right? They can mm-hmm. fake it. And some people are really good liars. And so things sometimes are going on inside of people and they're constant. I can tell you, I, at one time in my life, I had no peace, no peace. And I had inner storms going on. And it was always something, you know, it's a turbulent nature. It's the fallen nature of man. It's, it's the flesh man, the corporate, um, humanity or sea of humanity speaks of the raging and restless surging masses, the water going wild, tossed to and fro, the inner storms, turbulent motions. And these sometimes are thoughts because it's all here in the mind. If we can point it, you know, wherever the mind is, right? The thoughts just won't quit. They go and they go and they go. And when you have peace for a minute, they come back and they attack and they come back and they come back. So it's a tossing. It's a sea. It's a place of no peace. We know that In Isaiah 57, 20 through 21, it says, but the wicked are like the storm-tossed sea, for it cannot be still, and its waves churn up mire and muck. That's like the flesh man. There's no peace, says my God, for the wicked. Jude 13, these men are hidden reefs in your love feasts shamelessly feasting with you, but shepherding only themselves. They only care about themselves. She's talking about ministers here. They are clouds without water, carried along by the wind, fruitless trees in autumn, twice dead after being uprooted. They are wild waves of the sea. So here again, the the seas foaming up their own shame wandering stars from whom the blackest darkness has been reserved. These are people, if we look at the people in the church, they're the ones that have never given their life. They've never surrendered. They've never said, work on me. I've already mentioned that. Because worldly people, they don't want the church. They don't want God. Real worldly people, the unbelievers, do not want him. So, and they mock. They're going to suffer their own, what he's going to do with them. And we know that that is coming to an end. He is going to rule and reign in this earth. He's going to manage it. He's going to rule and reign even through his overcomers, kings and priests. After the order of Melchizedek, (laughs) it's like him. Mm -hmm. So one more, the victory of the lamb, they will make war against the lamb and the lamb will triumph over them because he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and he will accompany by his called and chosen and faithful ones. Then the angel said to me, the waters you saw where the prostitute, where the prostitute was seated are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So that just explains what the sea is. We can see that very clearly, it shows it very clearly. So looking at the sea, so they're pouring, he's pouring, the angel's pouring that second bowl into the sea. 
and it become and it became as the blood of a dead man so what ends up happening is when you think of the blood of anything dead when it sits even for a short period of time it stinks after a while blood stinks if it just a dead man or a dead body smells you know i used to work i used to work in this bank and the building was um i don't know they had a lot of holes and the mice would come in and i can tell you the stench <laughs> that you would smell <laughs> in this building when a mouse was in the wall for any period of time, that it died in the wall, right? This bowl is being poured over people and it's like their blood is exposed and they're like a dead man and they stink. That's what ends up happening. The Lord, in, in several scriptures, he talks about the stench. They're like dead men. They have a stench. They have a smell. The smell I can't stand. It's of decay. Dead man decays. So what it's doing is it sh it's showing what's inside of them. They're like dead men inside and they stink and their bodies are decaying. That's a picture of what the bowl does. It manifests itself, but let me just continue. And it became, okay, we've got two here. It says the blood of a dead man and every living soul died in the sea. I'm going to go back to that. So just keep that thought. I'm trying to um, modify this so that we can get done with all of it. But the dead men, if I look in um, Isaiah 60, 65, I'm just going to look quickly. I'm going to look at, no, this is Revelation. The eyes, um, the Passion Translation, so 65. It talks about judgment coming. It talks about what they are. They sit inside their tombs. You know, the Lord is speaking about these people that he's judging as if they're dead men. And then it reaches a point where it says, they think, you know, until judgment comes, they think that they're high and mighty and they're really full of pollution, he says, and they're unclean meat. But he says, they say to others, stay away, don't come near me. I'm too holy for you to touch. These people are like a stench in my nostrils the Lord says, a smoldering fire that doesn't go out. This is the way he sees these people that have never allowed, they live in the body realm, they're more concerned about the body than they are the spirit. Again, they're more concerned about the flesh. So, the stench is horrible. It's smelled by other people. It's like, again, exposure. What's inside of that person is decay. Somehow, it shows itself in a horrible way. So that person sees what they're doing. And they repent. See, this is all about 
coming to a place where a person will repent. Finally, this is what it is. See, because he said, repent, repent. This is coming. This is coming. You know, it, remember John the Baptist or John, the one that baptized, he said to the, to the scribes and Pharisees, you know, who warned you of the judgment to come? You know, who brought you here? You know, you people need to go basically in a nutshell through the judgment because you're the worst of the worst. You are the religious that trap people in your traps, like Satan, religious traps of death, not life. So in Revelation 3, 1 through 6, he was talking to the church of Sardis. I'm trying to wrap this up as quickly as possible. And I've mentioned this church before, but, you know, he, he comes to the churches. There's seven of them. Seven is the number of perfection. You know, maybe there were more than seven churches. Some people say there was a church in each city type thing. So there could have been several home type churches and this was the main church. I don't know. I just know that there's a lot of sevens in the book of Revelation. Well, there's one messenger for each church. There's one messenger, right? So there's seven messengers. <clears throat> but there, there could be more than seven churches, I'm, I'm trying to say. But this is the lead church of a city. And so the messenger came to the church of Sardis and said, um, you know, basically the Lord says, this is who he is. He's the one that holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. He says, I know all that you do. And I know that you have a reputation of being really alive, but you're actually dead. Wake up strengthen all that remains before you die, before all of it dies. This is a worldly worldly church, but it's also, you can see that the sea, they're, they're the sea of humanity. They're the, a body realm church. They're the lowest realm of the church because he said, and it's not that some of the people that were there were in fellowship with him. We could see that there's always a small group of people that follow the lamb, even in a church like this. But he says, if you don't change, I'm going to come like a thief and you'll have no idea what hour I come. So if you remain pure, the people that are pure here, and walk in fellowship with me in brilliant light. And I call you worthy. I'm just paraphrasing. But you that are actually walking as the dead, he says, you're actually dead. So this is the same as this bowl being turned out, turn, excuse me, the bowl of wrath being poured out into the sea of humanity. And there's dead men. These are the dead men that he's saying repent to. He says, strengthen what you have before it dies. Wrath will put you in a place where what needs to die will die. And if you're smart and you're going through wrath, you repent and you mean it with everything that's within you and you receive mercy when it's available to you. Because when he walked through, it wasn't time for any kind of mercy. When he walked through that sea that opened in that vision, in case somebody joined later, he walked through and there were people that were crying out in the sea to him for help. He was not going to give it to them. And I could tell you, he's not going to come a moment earlier than he knows it's time to come. Who knows how long you could be crying out in the sea, hoping he will come. Have mercy on me. Because 
We've never seen the Lord do this before. But this is the great and the terrible day of the Lord. And it'll be terrible for those who do not listen to him, that are not obedient, do not follow him wherever he goes, and live the way they want to. And the, even the churches they go to, they do what they want and how they want it and when they want it. So if we keep going, the Lord said to, the, when I say the Lord, it's really the apostle Paul, you know, the Lord through him said, oh, foolish Galatians. He said, you who, who bewitched you before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. You understood that he died on the cross for you. That's where you died. That's where you died to the old and you were no longer a fleshly man in a nutshell, but a spiritual man. He says, I I would like to um, learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the spirit by works of the law or by hearing of faith? Are you so foolish after starting in the flesh? Are you now finishing, excuse me, after starting in the spirit? I'm sorry. Are you now finishing in the flesh? It's all about faith. It's about the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to read the rest of it because this is good. So what has happened to you, foolish Galatians? Who has put you under an evil spell? Did God not open your eyes to see the meaning of Jesus's crucifixion? Was he not revealed to you as the crucified one? So answer me this. Did the Holy Spirit come to you as a reward for keeping Jewish laws? No, you received him as a gift because you believed in the Messiah. Your new life began when the Holy Spirit gave you new birth. When then would you so foolishly turn from living in the spirit to trying to finish in your own works? Have you endured so many trials and persecutions for nothing? We know that tr through many trials, we enter the kingdom of God. That pressure, that affliction brings a change in the way you think. And it changes you from fleshly. That's one of the things that he does. He will allow you to go through some tribulation until... You agree with him. He's just waiting for you to agree with him. He's just waiting for you to not be confident of the flesh, but to be confident that he will complete the work in you until the day of Jesus Christ. So he goes on to say, foolishly, you turn from the living, from living in the spirit to trying to finish by your own works. Have you endured so many trials and persecutions for nothing? Like, haven't you learned through those trials that it's the Lord that gets you through them all? That he's the one that you just take his hand and follow him and you make it through. And when you make it through, it's like you moved from one level of glory to another. It says... What does the lavish supply of the Holy Spirit in your life and the miracles of God, tremendous power, have to do with keeping religious laws? The Holy Spirit is poured out upon us through the power of faith. So this is all about faith. So I'm just going to say, what ends up happening a lot, and I'm just going to use this as an example of what I just said. I went to this church once, and... The preaching was was good. It wasn't very deep. It was good. It was okay. It was Pentecostal. You know, it had that Pentecostal um, 
flair. And, but the one thing I really enjoyed about that church is there was a lot of scripture. So when the preaching occurred, um, usually I just absorbed the scripture and I let the Lord teach me, you know, on my own. I had to do that because I didn't always believe the same way that it was taught because he was teaching me a little differently, but I knew I was supposed to be there at that time. So the, when the preaching would get done and you usually felt pretty good when the preaching was done, when the preaching was done, you know, every once in a while you would have, who wants to be, you know, anybody want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior? And someone would say, oh, you know, yes, I do. You know, they'd come up and they, their life, you know, would feel like it was brand new because they received that new birth experience. Holy Spirit came in, birthed the spirit inside of them. You know, later, they're, later possibly, or even that day, they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That person was so happy. It was like they began their new spiritual life. Sometimes what would happen, I mean, the altar call was a big part of this church. Sometimes what would happen is people would go up and they would receive deliverance for whatever they needed. And it ended up many received deliverance. It was something that happened often. It began in the spirit. But what ended up happening is after you were there a while, what began in the spirit felt like it was moving into the flesh, like the works. It became legalism. It became a taste of legalism. So what would end up happening is the minister would say, at the end of this service, um, we're going to do an altar call you know, the music would be playing, you know, gently. And, you know, the atmosphere is there. And anyone that wants prayer, come up. Okay, no one comes up. Anyone that sinned this week and know that they did, come up, you know. Oh, if we didn't get someone to come up, then it was... If you're saying you didn't sin this week, you're lying. I mean, I'm just rewording these things, okay? But this is the way I felt inside. So then, and some days, I, some Sundays, I would sit there and I would just like, wait, wait. And I'm like, nope, not going up. <laughs> not going up. It was like, that person wanted you up there and wanted to pray for you, whether you wanted it or not. You know, it was like, you're going to come up here and I'm going to pray for you. And so it was kind of like, okay, so if you had a sinful thought this week that, you know, didn't come from the Lord, come up here and I want to pray for you. So, okay, that had to have been me. Obviously, she's calling me up. Okay, like you can't go to the Lord yourself, right? You can't, you can't ask for forgiveness. So this is what we're supposed to do. So you go up and ministry is always wonderful, but somehow it leaves this impression with you that it's all about works. It's about my works. It's about me. It's about, I made a mistake this week. Oh, I even had an evil thought. How horrible am I? All of this, the, this person that was a newborn baby in the spirit has now begun to think fleshly what was what begun in the spirit ends up being in the flesh i saw there people that were delivered of i'll just say sexual sins that were so happy and then they didn't seem happy anymore And then you find out they have a double life going on. Why? Because the message was 
You have to do this yourself. And they couldn't do this their self before they came for deliverance. How are they supposed to do it afterwards? It's by the spirit. The Lord keeps you. He delivers you and he saves you. He's the savior in whom he saved and he set free. He will continue to save you until you are saved to the uttermost. And that's the truth. We're coming to a time of complete salvation. Those overcomers you saw, they were coming to a place of complete salvation. That's freedom. That's salvation, spirit, soul, and body. That is the fullness of him. That is a, that it's the end of your faith because now you're living it. And that's for everyone. That's for everyone to receive. So how can a person that starts in the spirit and gets moved into a place of thinking, I am a dirty, rotten sinner because I had this thought. Why don't you just say, go to the Lord. Talk to him about what you're dealing with. You know, that was one thing I know that I've heard you say, I just went to him and I just explained what I was feeling. I didn't hold anything back because he loves me and he let me get all of these things out that I needed to get out. And he just listened and it was like, are you done now? All right, let's get on, <laughs> let's get on with our life, you know? He's not worried about all these little things, but what he gets worried, what he gets concerned about is when you move to the flesh and you come out of the spirit and all of a sudden it's works, a works mentality. I have to do this myself. Oh, I gained 20 pounds. You know, it's like, pray and help me, Lord. Let's do it by the spirit. But if you keep thinking about Food, you're going to think about food. Do you, it's like if you just think about sin, if you think about how rotten you are, you're just going to keep being rotten. <laughs> you, you know, in your mind, even if you died on the cross with him and you're really a new creation and he just wants to, to have time with you so he can clean all of that gunk out so he can remove the effects of Satan within you but you can't do it in the flesh. These people have moved to a death realm because the flesh is death. The flesh is enmity against God. The flesh hates God. The flesh can never do it. It's this living soul is a mixture of soul and spirit. It's a mixture. It's never spirit. It's mixture. I'm spiritual this minute. I'm soulish this minute. I'm fleshly this minute. I'm tossed to and fro. And this, which is moving towards the Lord, the next minute, somebody tells me how rotten I am. Now I'm focused on how rotten I am. I'm tortured over how rotten I am. When he says, that's what, not what I do unless you're in wrath. When you're in wrath, you will feel the torture. You will know the torture of the nastiness, the death that's in you. You will stink like a ble a, like dried blood, the dried blood of a dead man. Every living soul, every person that has mixture is going to die in the sea. And guess what? That's good news. Do you see how it's good news? Because he removes the mixture and you end up in connection and life and in the spirit with him. Can you, can you see how spiritually he brings that correction. 
what you did, you began in the spirit, you went into the flesh. Now I need to move you back into the spirit so that I can continue to do the work in you. But I've got to show you what you're doing it has no life in it. It's death. It's like dead man's bones. It stinketh. <laughs> King James. It stinketh. Is that King James for stinks? <laughs> so anyhow, it gets rid of mixture because mixture is death. So it's all about the Holy Spirit working. I said, you know, one of the things that I know with the Lord is that he is Savior. To me, he has been my Savior. He's been not only a Savior of my spirit, he's been a Savior, savior of my soul. And it's worked out into my body. He, if I look at, and I'm, I'm getting very close to done. So Psalm 89, 9, I will sing unto the Lord. O Lord, God of hosts, who is like you, O mighty Lord? Your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule the raging sea. Then its waves mount up and you still them. One of the things that he taught me over the past, even the past year, when I started to feel, um, and you probably can understand what I'm talking about, when, when, when I couldn't believe what he was saying to me, like personally, okay, what I was going through, um, was at times a lack of peace. And he was not only savior, but he was king in me. Here it says he rules over the raging sea. So when I started raging inside, like, a, like the sea, and I started going, but Lord, you told me this and it's not what it, it's not what it looks like. I don't understand what's going on. You know, I, I believe you, but this, this makes it really hard to believe, you know? Oh, yeah. Help me. Help me, Lord. Help me. How many times have I said, help me? Oh, my goodness. And so then he came back to me and he, he showed me I could believe because he he's, can be very gentle when you come to him. He's very gentle. We know that. He's very loving. You spoke about that early earlier. He's so tender. He's so loving. He's so wonderful. So he comes to you. He never, 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 when I went through this major learning curve in him, <laughs> he never treated me in a way that humiliated me. When he, any man or woman, even in the church, would have humiliated because I didn't believe like I should. He came to me and he gently loved on me. And he said to me, I've given you a crown of peace. Put it on. Yes, sir. <laughs> and as soon as he spoke to me, I was like, I am on it. I, the, I, you know, everything is wonderful. You know, yesterday it was falling apart, but today is great. And that's how he moves you. See, that's how he changes your mind. He does it really gently. He tells you who you are. He tells you what he did for you. He tells you the truth. And he loves on you. And he holds you through it. He's so gentle. So loving. Because he is love. And then you go to the next storm. <laughs> the next lesson. Oh, my God. <clears throat> you know, and back we're doing the same thing. But eventually. You get to a place. 
where it can no longer affect you because you know the truth and he has worked in you. He did it. He worked in you so much that now nothing will move you. He leveled the mountains and raised the valleys and made the crooked path straight. Amen. And that's what I was going to say eventually. <laughs> I was helping you out. You always do. So he saves to the, the uttermost. And he is the king. I'm trying to skip, skip through. Um, and when he rules, he'll just say, peace. You know, he says, peace. And it's like, yep, there it is. Because your mind is going and it just needs to get the focus back on him. And when he speaks, even in the spirit, see, he, he says things over us all the time. We don't always hear everything he says. We, you know, we, we hear with our hearts. We hear with our thoughts. You know, we hear in different ways. Sometimes we hear with numbers. Sometimes we hear with, you know, we've learned many different ways to hear from him. But the bottom line is, when he speaks, sometimes it's not in a way that your ears can hear, but he spoke over you because he loves you. And he wants you to be victorious. He wants you to walk in triumph, right? He wants you to cross the finish line. It's a race we're running, right? So mm -hmm. the bottom line is we, just a couple more things. Um, we know that the church is supposed to be the one that helps us to mature. And unfortunately, it doesn't. Sometimes it, it helps the leader be lifted up. It helps the leader. Sometimes if it's a pyramid, then the leader doesn't help people grow and mature in him. Sometimes they just come and they just preach. They don't preach anything that helps you go, oh, now I get it. Now I get it. And then the Lord works with that. So he's changing the message. We're to grow into, like I said, into Christ and in, into, his, into his head. That means we're thinking with the mind of Christ the body, you know, the blood flows from the head to the feet, right? We're all connected perfectly. So in this day, the Lord, in this day, the Lord is bringing the wrath, but he's also bringing deliverance when it's time. And that's what he's been doing through these overcomers. He's prepared them. He's preparing them. He's giving them his pure word. And we know that leaven, a form of yeast, can mean sin. But let me just show you something. So I'm almost done. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 through 8 basically talks about getting rid of the old leaven. So your boasting is not good. Do not know, do you not know that a little leaven works through the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old leaven that you may be a new unleavened batch. Okay. So you get rid of the old so that you have no more leaven. So you, he's taken the sin out. So he's, he's giving you a word that's clear that doesn't have mixture like that word that I was just talking about where you know he's working in you changing you from glory to glory and 
it gets you to a place where there's no lies inside. There's no junk. There's no um, works of the flesh. There's, you know, he said at one point, he said, um, be careful of the leaven of the, the Pharisees or the Sadducees because it's just lies. What he's saying is they teach lies. They teach works, the works of the law. He says, be careful of that. So he takes all of that junk out. It causes death in people because the Pharisees were probably the most unhappiest people I've ever seen. You know, he rebuked them all the time. And we know that those are the people he went around rebuking. He didn't even rebuke the sinners. He rebuked the religious constantly. The sinners who had an open heart came to him and he loved on them and he, and he spoke his word to them. So there are, there are three dimensions. So I'm just going to finish. First of all, I'm just going to finish this sentence. A new unleavened batch as you, as you really are, you're unleavened. That's who you are in Christ. There's no sin in you. There's no death in you. That's who you are. He made you brand new. You are a new creation. You are created after him. He is the new creation, man. He was the first. And in his death, he brings many sons and daughters to glory. All we have to do is just believe that he, what he did on the cross was for us. And that's where we died in him. And we died with him. He died for us, as us, and with us. And then we start getting the leaven out, the dross, the junk, the mixture. And you have to be careful what kind of a church you go to because they, like I said, that last one I just mentioned, they'll pour junk into you. And I ended up feeling dead. Every time I left that church, I felt like, ew, I don't even, now I have to go meet with him, you know, so that I can feel life again. Now I need to go read the Bible for myself and hear it for myself so that that junk that she, she or he just taught me goes. So it says, therefore, let us keep the, the feast, not with old leaven, leavened with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So here we have old leaven, then we have unleavened, and then we get to a place, I really am almost done, and you're like, quit lying to me. <laughs> but anyhow, and then we get to a place where the old leaven, so it's all purged out and it's all unleavened, then you get to a place where there's leaven again, but it's the truth. So the Lord said, he said, the kingdom of God is like, okay? So he said, I'm going to tell you a parable. So he spoke in these visions. He spoke so that you could see, you know, you can see a picture in your mind and understand. He said, the kingdom of heaven, which is the kingdom of God, and I've talked about that before, is like leaven that a woman took and mixed into three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. So this is the new leaven. This is what he's going to do in the earth. He's through wrath. He's stripping out the old leaven. He's getting you to a place where you say, I'm ready to hear. I repent. Because just like the, the plagues of Egypt, they, they didn't repent. Pharaoh didn't repent. So here comes the next plague. He didn't repent, excuse me, repent. Just like in the book of Revelation, the first bowl, the second bowl, we get to other bowls and they still haven't repented. It's like people would rather live in misery than repent sometimes because they're hard headed, they're stiff necked. The Lord said, I have to do this because of my stiff-necked people. 
That's how he gets their attention. That's why wrath has come because people are stiff necked. They will not change. So here comes the first one. Here comes the second one. Here comes the third one. Here comes the all the way to the seventh. And people still do not repent. That's a, that's a very scary place to be in. So this leaven is like it's worked this new leaven. It's like new wine. It's like, what is Melchizedek? What does he serve? Bread. <laughs> so here we see leaven, yeast, bread. We could go on with this topic, but we're not. And then we learn that there's new wine and new wineskins. So the kingdom is like leaven, the new leaven that is in you, spirit, soul, and body, sea, earth, heavens. It's totally, it's all because leaven expands. The kingdom is expanding within us. That's what's happening. And then we have new wine and new wineskins to hold the new wine. So it's all changing. So the good news, like I've already mentioned, is the Lord has these overcomers that have crossed the sea that when it's time, they will come and they will minister to those who are ready to receive salvation. These are those that have received full salvation from him. He gives them the doves. You, the vision, all the doves left his hands. They went where they were supposed to go. He, that's Holy Spirit pouring out into these people that will minister, do body ministry, bring the new leaven, get rid of the old, but bring the new leaven of the kingdom so that those that have been made ready because of wrath, vengeance, judgment, they can now become partakers of the kingdom because they finally repented. So it just says this, and I love it. So it starts out talking about judgment, which I've already read some of it, but in Isaiah 65, it says, and the title is A Chosen Remnant. So here is what Yahweh says. As in, as new wine is found in the cluster, so that's 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 a group of people, you know, it's like a cluster of grapes, right? We've talked about people are like grapes, you know, the wine press and all of that. And someone says, "Don't destroy it." So he's saying, "Don't destroy the remnant." The Lord has sealed his remnant talks about that i think in revelation 6 the ceiling he says to the the angels on the four corners do not do anything until my people are sealed he sealed his remnant and so the earth knows do not touch that one because they're sealed so he says don't destroy it for there is a blessing in it there that's where I will do, excuse me, that's what I will do for my servant's sake. I will not destroy them. I will raise up offspring from Jacob and from my chosen ones of Judah to possess my mountains and my servants will settle there. For my people who seek me, I will make the plain of Sharon a pasture of for flocks in the east and in the west, the valley of trouble will be a resting place for cattle, for my people who seek me and no other God. It goes on to talk about destiny and how they'll never go hungry. And so with all of that said, 
This is where he wants all of his people. But he said, repent. You know, you talked about, you talked about the doves coming out of the hands. And you also talked about the lightning from east to west. And that again, the Lord is coming. And he, you, you said in that vision that the lightning, if you can remember it from just this, the lightning came in certain key spots. Do you remember what you said? I'm sorry. Remember the vision you had earlier of the light, yeah. the lightning that was coming down in key spots. Yeah, it was like chain. There was one. I saw one like flash of lightning go from east to west, and then coming down was like chain lightning hitting certain spots. Okay. So that's what he said to me. When my lightning comes from east to west, he says, "Don't you know?" that I will know where you are, no matter where you are, because I'm in you in this way. And those people are the ones that the lightning will hit. Because, you know, even at one time you talked about, um, there, there's a, you didn't, you mentioned something about this, but there's also a place in the Bible where it talks about a cord, like a silver cord. You know, the Lord is connected to his people. So he knows exactly where every single person, are. he knows they're sealed. He knows how to give them what they need for this day. They will be totally equipped to do every good work with total clarity, purity, in love with him, and a clear word that brings change. He said he will have kings and priests, but he also said he will have judges, but he also said he will have saviors. And these are the ones that will go out on his behalf and they will touch a dying world and, a, and a people that have, have finally said, I want him. I've made up my mind. I have been through so much wrath that I know I stink at the, and I need to be cleaned up. King James is. <laughs> yeah. And there is a place in the Bible where it talks about, I saw you naked in your blood. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing. This was, the, it's a condition people are in and he shows them their condition until they repent. And they say, I don't want to be in this condition anymore. But it make, he makes them know it, but know it, but know it. There's no denying it. And you can't get away from it because you're faced with it. And it's ugly and it stinks and it's horrible until you say, I need you. And this time I'm not turning back. So... There's always more, but I'm going to stop there. Um, I'm just so glad that the Lord spoke to us with so many visions today. Are you talking to me? I can't hear anybody. Are you guys talking to me? <laughs> yeah. No, I had to mute you to ask Rodney if he's seeing what I'm seeing. What were you seeing? The right side of your head where you have your hair parted is blonde. I know it looks, the light is shining, it doesn't matter, but the left side is darker. Yes, yeah, so because the way the light's hitting the one side more than the other. Well, it, it could be just because of whatever, but I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. So would you just pray for whatever comes out, whatever you feel in your heart? Mark. I would love to. <laughs> <clears throat> Father, you show yourself in a mighty and loving way to us all the time. And to those who would 
see you as you truly are and to know you as you truly are, both loving and kind and gentle and also a man of his word, a God of his word, that you judge the righteous and the unrighteous, that you are both our God, our creator, our father, and our dad, that you <laughs> lead us into the path that you've chosen for us. Each of us individually have our own place in you. And you deal with each of us individually, one-on-one. -on -one. That is how you are. And one of the many things I love about you, Dad, is you are more than able, more than capable to accomplish all that you have set forth to do. And all we have to do is believe and rest. <laughs> this is your word has come forth. It's not about works. But it's about faith. A full and complete confidence and trust in you to do all that you have set forth to do in each of us. So that when you are finished doing what only you can do, we are a true reflection of you. Thank you, Dad, that we can rest in this and trust in you. With these lives that you have given us, it's not our lives anymore. Your blood paid for us on the cross. We thank you for that. Eternally thanking you and worshiping you and being in your presence all the time. It's what our hearts desire even now. Your will be done, Father. Your kingdom has come. And we know this. You have come. We know this. We thank you for that. How great are you? They will know. The ones that even pierced you will see. Amen. Amen. That was beautiful. So, happy new year. <laughs> See you next year. <laughs> Um, Rodney, thank you for coming. It's so good to see you. So good to see you yeah. come in sometime. Okay. And yeah. so, um, love to you both. And it's watching. Thank you for coming. And we'll see you next week. Bye.